Hello everyone, my name is Ryan, back again with Summit Hydraulics. Today we're going to be doing a electric rear remote kit install on a L4701 Kubota. Once again, this machine was donated to us for the installation video today by Southwest Tractor and Equipment. If you guys need any tractors, trailers, implements, or more, please take a look at them. There's a link for them in our bio below. Uh, without further ado, let's get into this. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check our parts list, make sure all of our components are here. Um, we have everything that we need to make this an easy and clean install. So I'm just gonna go through our parts list, make sure we have all of our items, and then we will go ahead and start assembling everything together. Okay, so at this point I've installed the hydraulic adapters, the plugs, and the hose fittings on this side onto the manifold. I've gone ahead and attached the couplings, tightened those down, and I have it fastened to the bracket. And what I've done is I've left two of the bolts in it to be able to kind of manipulate this bracket. This is the clamp bracket that will clamp onto the ROPS. And this will make it a little bit easier to install. Um, so I only really have to deal with two bolts when I get this thing uh, up on the, on the ROPS and I go to put the last two bolts in. I'll just start those two bolts and then I can just continue to, to tighten it down and clamp it to the ROPS. So that is our next step. We'll go ahead and get this thing up on the ROPS and we will get it clamped on and fastened. All right, now we've got the valve mounted to the ROPS. Um, it is pretty fastened tight and we're gonna go ahead and install our spools on each circuit for the manifold and we will start that up right now. Of course, like always, we're going to line up the P that is stamped on the valve with the pin, pole, the pin hole, the machining hole on the manifold block. All right, now we've got our pressure and our tank line connected and fastened. I already started routing these and zip tying these up against the frame here uh, before tightening these down. It makes it a little bit easier um, while you're routing and trying to connect the other side of these hoses before you tighten them down. So I just kind of started the threads first. Now I finished tightening them down. They're tight now and we are ready to show you how we have routed these hoses. So you can see here, I've taken the hoses off the P&T port on the summit valve. I've just kind of routed them up against the ROPS. There is this crossbar here that this little box is connected to. I just routed it up against the backside of this crossbar and then used a couple zip ties 
on each side here and tuck that hose back up underneath that bar. And then I routed it back through uh, more towards the seat, back through the inside of the machine here. You can get a shot of how, how uh, we've routed that back down through and kind of just followed. There's some other hydraulic lines back in there and I've just zip tied the hoses up against those hydraulic lines. They're, they're gray steel tubes that I zip tied, zip tied the hoses up against and just kind of followed the natural routing of the rest of the hydraulic lines that are on the machine and zip tied our hoses right up against them. Here you can see the mid-mount distribution block where we've tied in um, from the summit valve in the back. Uh, this line here is our, our line, uh, which is part number H069, also known as number 12 on the parts list. This valve runs from this manifold block on the 90 degree side and goes all the way back to the rear and connects to the P port on the summit valve. So it's the right side of the manifold block. You can see this orange dot. That is where we're tying in. Um, this again, hose number uh, HS069, number 12 on the parts list connected to the right side of the manifold block going to the P port on the summit valve. Okay, so here you can see the opposite side, um, which is the T port connection on the summit valve in the rear. We ran the hose, which is hose part number HS075, also number 11 on your parts list, connects to the T port on the summit valve. We run it all the way to the front of the machine. If you are sitting in the seat, the port that we are connecting to is on the left hand side of the loader valve. And I don't know if you can see from here, but there is an orange mark which designates the orange side on the loader valve itself. This is again where we tie in hose number HS075, number 11 in your parts list, connects directly to the factory 90 that comes right out of this loader valve. So here we're gonna start the switch box control uh, section of the installation. The first thing we're gonna do is attach this clamp bracket to the right side of the ROPS. If you're looking from the rear of the machine or you're sitting in the seat, this is gonna be on your right hand side. Um, this kit is pretty ambidextrous. If you wanted to switch this around, you could put the valve on the right side and the switch box on the left side if you prefer. In this case, we're going to, we're gonna go ahead and put the switch on the right and mount the valve on the left. Um, there again, similar to the way that I started the bracket for the valve, I've started the two bolts on the rear side of this just to get it started and it'll make it easier for, uh, for me to clamp this directly to the ROPS. So we're gonna go ahead and get this clamped onto the ROPS and then I will continue on from there and attach the switch box uh, to this bracket. As you can see, this bracket is adjustable. Um, so depending on where you like it, you could either move this bracket forward a couple of spots, uh, slots on this uh, on these drill holes here, or backwards, depending on where you like it. I think this will be a good area for how we want it. Um, but like I said, you could uh, you could pretty much put this anywhere anywhere you want. Okay, you can kind of see what I've done here is like I said, I just kind of bundled this up and put a couple zip ties on it. Maybe tough to see from where we're looking at it, but there was a hole in this plate for the loader valve and I was able to feed a 
zip tie through that hole and come around and fasten that right up against that plate there. Um, and then you'll notice the wiring that runs to the battery here. I've kind of ran this down back behind this filter here and just up against the motor. There's some other wires that are loomed here and hoses and such. I just kind of followed those all the ways to the front of the machine and kept it tucked up in there. I know it's probably hard to see there, but you know, like I said, it's it's kind of how you're comfortable doing it. This is this is how I saw it might be the best routing for it. But if you're not comfortable doing it this way, you can do it however you like. Uh, but that is how we that's how I ran the wiring up to the front. All right, we are all finished up with the rear remote valve kit. Thank you guys for watching, we appreciate it. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel. We have more content coming occasionally um, and frequently. Um, there again, if you are in the market for any trackers, implements, trailers, or more, please do go see Southwest Equipment over in Morristown, Arizona. Uh, they have been gracious enough to lend us this machine today for the video, and we do thank them very much. Appreciate your time. <music>